7 Tips on How to Save Money When Going Solar Solar system is a long-term investment that pays off in dividends. Its upfront costs can be high though. So how can you maximize your profits from a home solar system while spending less on it? Well, that's what we're going to be covering in this video. Hey, what's up? It's Jason. And today we're going to be talking about profit from a home solar system and the ways to increase it. An average solar system in the US costs from ten dollars to $20,000 depending on your area, the way you want to set it up and the equipment that you use. On average, the system pays for itself in about six to eight years. Solar panels last for over 25 years, so you can expect it to pay for itself at least two to three times during its lifespan. So what I want to share with you today are seven tips that will lower your upfront costs and increase the earnings from solar. So let's jump into it. The first tip I have is don't add batteries if you don't need them. You see, energy storage makes your home more sustainable, which means you won't lose power during blackouts. However, it does increase the cost of your solar system by a lot and extends the payback period. Some experts say bluntly, solar panels pay for themselves, batteries not quite yet. So let's just do a quick recap on three types of home systems so you'll see what I'm talking about. Grid tie one is when your house with a solar system is connected to a commercial grid. You can draw energy from the grid or sell your excess solar energy into it. It's definitely the cheapest type of system that provides a steady income. But when there is a power outage, well, your home loses power as well. Next, there is an off-grid system. Here you don't have a grid connection and rely solely on solar panels and batteries. It can be almost twice as expensive as a grid tie setup without batteries. It's hard to evaluate the savings with an off-grid system because, well, you don't get any bills. It's a setup mostly for remote locations and places where the grid really is unstable. And then there are hybrid systems. You have the grid connection, but you also have a little battery bank that powers your home during power outages. This setup is, yes, more expensive than a grid tie system, but cheaper than an off-grid one. There are scenarios where a hybrid solar system pays off better than a grid tie one. Let's say you use a lot of electricity in the evening and you're forced to use power from the grid because the solar system doesn't quite produce enough at that time. The rates can be higher than standard ones because it's the point of peak demand. In a hybrid system, the inverter can switch your house to battery support to avoid purchasing energy and a small battery saves you money this way. The next thing I'd like to talk about are panels. Tip number two, pay attention to the brand. Solar panels make up to 60% of your installation cost. And people always get confused when it comes to choosing them because there are just so many brands around. And it's easy to overpay by a lot just for a famous brand name. If you're looking for monocrystalline panels for home, well, I can break down the top solar brands into three price groups. First, there are the Chinese panels. Asian engineers try to make their panels as cheap and efficient as possible. The most known brands are Jinko, JA Solar, Trina, Longi, and Phono. They offer definitely the cheapest panels, but they can be hard to find in the US sometimes because of the high demand and, well, the tense relationship between China and the USA. If you want to save money, look for a well-known Chinese brand. Then there are the North American panels. They are more expensive than the Chinese panels, but the warranties and the quality is often higher with them. Famous brands are Silfab, Mission Solar, Aptos Solar, and I can also recommend Canadian Solar, though it is a half Chinese company. Finally, there are big companies that put out premium class panels, and they are of the highest quality and come with the longest warranties, but they of course cost the most. I'm talking about the brands like Panasonic, SunPower, LG, Solaria, and Rec. Now, we actually talked about some of these brands in one of our previous videos, and you can go and find the link to it on the screen right now. Also, another tip, tip number three, when it comes to panels. Pick larger modules. The solar market changes as we speak. Three years ago, people were buying mostly 300 to 350 watt panels for their homes. Today, people are more inclined towards 400 to 450 watt panels. These modules are larger, and sometimes they are harder to fit on the roof, but you can build a powerful system with less of them, and thus pay less for modules and for installation. Uh, for example, you would need 20 300 watt modules for a 6 kilowatt system. You could build the same system with 15 400 watt panels. 
the trend towards bigger panels also rhymes well with the rising size of an average home system in the US, which increased from 6 kilowatts to 7 kilowatts. We talk in detail about factors that affect your profits from solar in our guide on saving money with solar energy. It explains in detail all the things that I'm not going to be able to cover in this video. Uh, the guide is free and you can find it in the description below the video. Moving on, tip number four, pay in cash. Look, it can be tempting to lease a solar system or take a loan for it. However, in the long run, monthly payments you'll have to make burn all the profit that a solar system generates. The experts from Google Project Sunroof calculated that a 4 kilowatt solar system in Berkeley can bring from $30,000 to $50,000 over its lifetime. The upfront cost of the system is somewhere around $10,000 if you pay in cash. In this scenario, your profits after 20 to 25 years will be over $20,000. But if you lease a system or take a standard 6% loan, your earnings diminish to only two to $5,000 by year 25. Crazy, right? So if you really want to go solar, but you don't have the cash for it, there are special programs from banks that offer loans for clean energy projects. The interest is lower, like 4% or so. Your savings won't be as high as if you paid in cash, but the system is still going to be profitable. Speaking of special programs, tip number five, use incentives. State and utilities actually want us to go solar, and they're willing to help financially as well. The most important program for solar owners is ITC, or Federal Solar Tax Credit. It lets you deduct 30% of your installation cost from your income taxes. For example, if you have a solar system that costs $15,000, you could claim $4,500 back. Now, total solar installation costs include inverters, batteries, as well as labor and shipping expenses. ITC is not the only incentive out there though. Some states have their own local programs. It can be their own tax credit or, say, sales tax exemption, which makes solar equipment cheaper as well. Utilities sometimes offer rebates for the customers that do go solar. Look, you're not going to get a lot, maybe a couple of hundred, but hey, <laughs> at the end of the day, everything counts. And since we started talking about utilities, well, here's tip number six. Find a good net metering program, if possible. Let me explain this one better. How do you profit from a solar system? Well, you use solar energy instead of commercial electricity. The higher the rates in your area, the larger the profit. When your system produces more than your house needs, you can sell solar energy into the grid. And this is called net metering or net billing. And it basically makes your electric meter go backwards. However, not every utility offers net metering programs and conditions for it can be different. For example, a utility might credit you for 10 kilowatt hours of solar energy per month but you won't get anything for anything above that mark. You aren't always free to choose your electric provider, but sometimes you are. And in this case, it makes sense to study the options that you have with the utilities, keeping in mind that you'll be using solar. Tip number seven, see if you can trade renewable energy credits. Solar systems generate not only clean electricity, but also so-called portfolio energy credits, PECs, also known as SRECs or SRECs for a certain amount of generated clean energy. An owner of a 10 kilowatt system can make 10 to 15 pecks a year. Now the peck in itself represents the progress that America makes towards its clean energy goals. And you can sell these energy credits on special online platforms. Your buyers will be uh, utilities and companies which need the credits to meet these goals set by the government. Peck prices or PEC prices change and they highly depend on your state and demand. In Ohio, for instance, uh, one pack could go for 10 bucks, but in the District of Columbia, the same pack two years ago traded for over $400. The procedure of trading packs varies slightly from state to state, but usually you register your system with the Public Utilities Commission and you sell packs through them, or, or a broker like SREC Trade or Soul Systems. Not every state offers pack trading though, Sometimes utilities offer rebates and incentives that require you to hand over all your pecs to get them. Now it's up to you if, of course, you want to do that. Well, and that's it. These are the tips that we have for you today. Before getting a solar system, I would recommend that you go and try out an online solar calculator that evaluates the costs of going solar in your area and profits from it. You can check out the calculator that we have on our website. It's advanced. Uh, it lets you plan your own system and provide you with a lot of data about your expenses and your earnings. 
You can go find that link in the description below. Please also go and check out our blog and all our socials. Saving money with solar energy is one of the main things that we write about. So you will find lots of great advice there. And hey, if you have any questions or if you'd like to share something that perhaps we missed, please leave a comment below. We do read them and we do answer them every day. And we're always eager to learn more about other people's experiences. Well, I'm Jason and until next time, be safe. Bye-bye.